It's no secret that Cyberpunk 2077 had one of the worst launches in recent gaming history, and there were a lot of accurate negative reviews posted for this game back in 2020 and early 2021. But today, Cyberpunk 2077 is in a much better state thanks to numerous patches and content updates, so most of the recent reviews for this game are very positive. But still, not everyone is happy about Cyberpunk 2077, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the most unhinged one-star reviews of this game. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's take a look at some one-star reviews of Cyberpunk 2077. I won't play this game anymore until 2077. I need to know if this game is gonna be real. And if it isn't, I'm suing you for being some liars. Video games should be realistic and historically accurate. You have 54 years, CD Projekt Red. 54 fucking years. Do you understand me? Much love, Mason. Well, at least he's bringing this with some love, you know? Cyber Flunk 2023. Still a buggy mess, everyone walking around like, hey. <laughs> My cousin lied to me about Jackie. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Oh, this poor guy. Keanu Reeves sucks. Come on, man. Why you gotta do my boy Keanu like that? They show uncensored bobs on my live stream. I like the ray tracing on the bobs. <laughs> hey, well, at least the, the lighting's pretty good, right? <laughs> Another trash game like The Witcher 3, but I think it's way better than Witcher 3, so one out of 10 for me. <laughs> this has to be trolling. There's no way this is a real review. Also, the guy's name is DVD Project LGBT. <laughs> All right, buddy. This game is a lie of a century. Fact that some people are still trying to simp this company is just unbelievable. Ubisoft has made some really sh games recently, but they've also made countless of really good games. So in other words, Ubisoft has at least done something. What are CD Projekt Red's accomplishments? Oh yeah, they made one playable game in 2015. I didn't like it, by the way. It was way too basic RPG. And then they made this fail. That's it. That's literally it. I'm not even counting Witcher 1 and 2. That would be equal to count GTA 1 and GTA 2 for Rockstar. Sad stuff. <laughs> Whoa, why you got a dog on the Witcher 1 and 2 like that? Come on, man. I don't know, it's funny. I, I understand not everybody likes The Witcher 3, but it's generally considered one of the best RPGs of all time, brother. Bad game had a trans flag. The game is buggy as sh and not what was promised. <laughs> what is he talking about, trans flag? I have no idea what that means. Okay, this, this, this one's pretty interesting here. PS5 patch 1.6, that's the Edge Runners patch. Amazing, didn't play on start, so don't know what the problems were, but now it's a really fantastic game. Storyline, subquest, music, video, gameplay, and atmosphere in the game really create a special one vibe of cyberpunk. And the rating is zero out of 10. Did he just forget to put the rating on this review? Cause it's so positive review. Still unimaginable garbage. If you think anything has changed, then you have been severely misled. It's funny to see these types of reviews too, cause they don't actually outline any criticisms of specific things that aren't fixed or are still broken or anything like that. They're just like, it's garbage, it's total garbage. The game is garbage, bugged, like the developers themselves at CD Projekt Red. Thank you, Reds, for cleaning the store from garbage. I won't buy games, and I will not. I'm not going to support them at all. They made it clear what they think about the Russians and Russia. Thank you, Pole fascist company. Games your sh <laughs> Dude. Oh my god. So I guess we know who this guy supports in the Ukraine war. Okay, so this next review was posted five days ago. I tried to get into Cyberpunk 2077 when it was first released, but it just couldn't hold my attention for very long. The clunky controls and combat were very off-putting and disappointing to me, and the dialogue was cringy at times. Perhaps one day when mods aren't needed to make this game tolerable, I'll try it again. Okay, then you're doing a review now, not recommending the game, but you haven't played it in two years? That's kind of wild, right? This next one might be my favorite review that I've found so far. This is on Google Reviews. 
picked up this game on a total whim thinking the concept and front cover, yes seriously, was cool. Until about 5 minutes ago and prior to writing this review, I was completely unaware of the hype or backstory of this game. My total playtime was about 2 hours until I had to stop and gave up. I was so bored that I noticed I was checking Reddit during the dialogue and just hitting the square button at whatever conversational response was highlighted at the top. I feel as though I didn't have any emotion attached to this as I didn't wait 8 years for this game to come out. However, I must state that I played their other game, The Witcher, and I thought that was boring too despite the good reviews. Firstly, I didn't understand the story and was bored by about 30 minutes, but I really tried to persist onwards to see if it got more exciting. It didn't. I had no idea who V was and what she was doing, why she was there, where I was, who Jackie was or how I knew him. Honestly, no idea. Even now, I couldn't tell you the story of what I have just played for over two hours. A backstory for a complete noob like me would have been really helpful. Yeah, the prologue of the game is kind of the backstory. <laughs> Another thing that switched me off during gameplay was that the dialogue was so boring as I mentioned above. I found myself switching off during the character interactions. I was also waiting for things to load for what felt like ages. Having completed the Spider-Man series and maxing them both out to 100% completion before playing this game, it really was an absolute snooze fest and a serious mistake to play this afterwards. Well, if you're not paying attention to any of the dialogue, then it makes sense that you don't know what's going on. It's like, man, this story's so boring. I can't even follow the dialogue. I'm not even paying attention. Man, what the hell is going on in this story? I have no idea. <laughs> it's just so funny to me, man. If you buy toilet paper on Amazon, you will have approximately 96 rolls of toilet paper for the price of this game. I bought a digital copy, so I can't even wipe once. <laughs> Have you ever went to the theater with someone to see a movie and it turned out to be one of the worst movies you have ever seen? Or imagine taking your kids to a Chuck E. Cheese's, giving them a thousand dollars in tokens, and then finding out you're in a state where Chuck E. Cheese's doesn't serve beer. You're screwed, that's what, because daddy, I still have tokens. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely got a flair for analogies. I would not recommend purchasing this game. Frustration and boredom for 60 bucks? Why can't I just play the effing game without being put through endless loops of the same scene? What the hell is this? <laughs> So I don't know if this guy had to reload saves or something, but that's pretty funny. So there you have it, taking a look at some one-star reviews of Cyberpunk 2077 in 2023. It's not that Cyberpunk 2077 is, should be immune from criticism or anything like that. I do think that the game has some flaws that are worth criticizing in reviews, but I also don't think the game is a one out of 10 or one star or anything like that. I think that's a little bit disingenuous. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more cyberpunk and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.